welcome to another little chemistry tale. Today what we're going to be doing is looking at a conversion between mass of a compound to mass of an atom within that compound and back. I want to focus on doing this in one step. So this is now our third link um, that brings these two little mole roads together. Now, it is possible to go mass to moles using molar mass moles to moles using subscripts because we're talking about an atom within a compound so we would use subscripts and then moles to mass again using molar mass that's fine uh, hopefully you can kind of process that one because in here I'm going to be focusing in on doing it in the one step method so in this case we have calcium phosphate and we want to know how many oxygen, how many grams of oxygen are within that. So I have 16.8 grams of calcium phosphate. Hope you know those polyatomic ions. Okay. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using percent composition as a conversion factor, but I'm going to drop the 100. I'm only going to look at the fraction in front. So for example, if the, you were going to buy a shirt and it was $20 and it to, the sale was 30% off, hopefully you would automatically multiply that by 0.3. 30% divided by 100 gives you that 0.3. That's pretty much what we're doing here. So I want grams of calcium phosphate in the denominator so I can eliminate them and I want grams of oxygen. Now part over the whole. The whole in this case is going to be the molar mass. So we have 310.18 grams for the molar mass and when I calculated that I included eight oxygens and each one was 16 grams and this gave me 6.93 grams of oxygen. Okay, now let's try it again because I can. The next problem shows us we can do this backwards. We're going to use that same percent composition formula, uh, but this time we're going to invert it. Okay, so if you make sure your units cancel, you should be in good shape for this. So this time I have 5.0 grams of potassium. If I want potassium to cancel, I need to put it in the denominator. And I want grams of potassium carbonate. Well, the whole is on top this time. And this is 138, assuming I do my algebra right. You should always check your teacher's math. We're pretty busy people. We make mistakes. And there are two potassiums and the, each bringing 39.1 grams. So now I use the percent composition, but this time inverted. And I get 8.8 .8 grams of potassium carbonate. All right, one more, because this one uses a percent, but instead of within a pure compound, we're going to look at including percentages of a mixture. So an or is an impure sample. Impure samples don't have a molar mass. They're mixtures of compounds. So what we have to do is get from those 45 grams of ore, if we want to find pure iron, iron is bound up in iron 2 nitrate. So I'm going to go from grams of ore to grams of iron 2 nitrate. And then I can find out how many grams of iron I could purify from this sample. So I have 45.0 grams of this ore. The question tells me 32% of it is iron 2 nitrate. What that means is for every 100 grams of ore, I would have 32 grams of iron. 
to nitrate. Sorry, there we go. Okay, so this is a way you can use a percentage of a mixture within dimensional analysis. Now we want to get rid of the grams of iron to nitrate, and we want grams of iron, and we're going to use that mass to mass ratio from percent composition. 179.87 and there's one iron each bringing 55.85 grams and if you crank out that math we get a paltry 4.5 grams of iron for all of our efforts so that's it I hope this is a technique that can really help you in your problem solving thanks for joining me